it's an uh, anthology film all related to themes of confinement, which hits very close to home for all of us during the height of the pandemic, especially with yours in volume two, I, I'm listening. Um, were, were you able to find yourself relating to it a lot? Well, I was actually in quarantine when I shot it. Like I, it was, it was real time. So we wish I was by myself with my son and my husband and then my friend Adam, who is a DP quarantined with us. Um, and we shot it all at the height of the COVID pandemic. So yeah, it was, um, it was very real. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Um, so how did you get involved with the project and what was that process like? Um, well, if truth be told, my mother is Trudy Styler and she, so she produced it. Um, and so nepotism was, um, was, the, was how I got, how I got the job. Um, but she asked if, uh, I, I, I was separated from my whole family. I still, I am actually, I'm still in Canada. Um, and she said she was doing this project where she was asking actors to um, create these films in quarantine with their families and um, she asked if I would be interested in doing one um, with her and because um, she's also an actress and I sort of jumped at the uh, the concept you know mainly because well I wanted to direct I've never directed I'm just usually just act and um, I also wanted an opportunity to collaborate with her as a way to kind of try and stay close and connected and um, uh, creative um, with my family. So my mother is in it as well as producing it. And then my sister plays Siri. Um, and then obviously my son is my son in, in, the, in, the, in the film. Oh, wow, that's incredible. It's like a family affair. And that was actually exactly. a question about um, how, I liked, how it was to work with your mother. Uh, do you guys like fight at all or it was pretty much smooth? Um, you know, I've been, um, I've worked with her as an actress before we did a play together and we've done a movie together. And then she directed a movie that I, I had a small role in. So she directed me, but this was the first time I got to direct her. And it was, it was so fun actually. Like, I think I was a little bit nervous in the beginning. Um, just, you know, that shifting dynamic of me sort of telling her what I would like her to do rather than the other way around. <laughs> um, but I, uh, she was very generous and with me and um, made me, like it was all, there was no fights. It, wasn't, it, was, it was very undramatic and very loving and collaborative. And she was very um, good at taking notes. <laughs> She's a professional, so. <laughs> That's amazing. <laughs> Um, so you mentioned your um, directorial debut. Uh, what was that like, yeah. directing for the first time? Um, you know, I think it's, it was never, uh, you know, shooting a movie in quarantine with your three-year-old and a one-man crew was, on, and on iPhone, um, iPhones, we had two iPhones. We, you know, I don't, I don't think that I ever thought my, my directorial debut would be like that, but um, for what it, you know, I, I really sort of just le lent into the, the, the challenge of it and um, so really loved the um, restraints, you know, um, and sort of forced, forced you to be more creative and sort of think on your feet. And I loved it. I, you know, as an actor, you're always, you have so little control um, in the creative process. Um, and I think directing, being able to be part of the process from the beginning to the very end, um, you know, uh, was such a great learning experience and also just so fun. Like I, I really want to do more. Um, I'm hoping this is just the beginning of my directing career. So I was really grateful for the opportunity. Awesome. So you premiered at Tribeca. What was it like going to Tribeca? Was it your first time there? I've not, I did. I'm, I'm actually in Vancouver um, at this film studio shooting Snowpiercer season three right now. So I didn't go anywhere near New York. Um, uh, but um, I was, it's a thrill like Tribeca, you know, I, I lived in New York for 10 years and um, Tribeca Film Festival is such so iconic and um, it's such a privilege and an honor to be um, a part of it. And so I was I was just excited that the project got to go there and be part of it. Um, I wish that I'd been able to go next time. 
Your character Alex often finds herself getting annoyed um, at the iPhone from the lights turning off to just like weird things happening with Siri. Um, what did that experience make you like never want to touch an iPhone again? Um, it's funny because now because every time I'd watch playback or like the editing cuts and they would say like hey my phone heard hey Siri she would turn on and like be like how can I help you and I'd be like no not no Siri <laughs> I still have a contentious relationship with Siri um uh that has remained awesome and um shooting on an iPhone um was that must have been new and especially with COVID, but it, maybe COVID turned it into like a new normal to shoot an iPhone. Um, was there any like difficulty shooting that or was it just like, was it? Was um, it we had to, I mean, I feel like we do everything on our phones. You know, we take photos, we take videos, we talk, we do FaceTime. We like actually feel like doing it on the f iPhone felt way more like, I, I could do it as opposed to having to learn how to work like an actual film camera and like complexity of that. So there was something really lovely about my friend who's Adam, who DP'd it. Um, you know, we, we decided to keep it really simple. The shots, the wide shots, the horizontal shots would just be still. Um, there was no panning, there was no zooming, there was no moving. And then all the movement was basically me with my phone talking to Siri and into my FaceTime um and in in that respect it was very natural because it was what I do all day and um so through this film we see amidst the chaos of being in quarantine we do see some raw and real moments especially with your son um what was the importance of showcasing you know those like happier moments despite everything that was going on in the world because I think that, um, thank you for noticing that. That was something I was really hoping to have. I think that, you know, re in reality, you know, you even though you're going through unprecedented times and, um, you know, things are going sort of insane around you and uh, so much unknown and fear, like as a mom, like you also have to be really present with your kid and my, my you know, my son has disabilities and um, is nonverbal and hard of hearing. So his reality is like, he had, he has no idea what's going on. Like he didn't, doesn't understand the concept of COVID or quarantine. So like, of course there would be moments where you're just with your son and like in his reality and, and making sure that he's content and happy and fed, you know? And I think all those things that you know, make you present as an adult that because you want to keep your child happy and safe um, and, uh, you know, alive, um, like all of those things just add sort of richness to the, the film, I think, I hope. Yeah. yeah, definitely. I mean, I definitely saw that. I'm sure a lot of other people did. Um, so my next question were, did you have any um, standout scenes or one that was your favorite? loved um you know it was really hard to direct myself um and most of the time it's just was me and my phone talking to myself um and that was a challenge but acting with my mom even though it was on facetime like for me that was the most fun sort of getting to have like the back and forth and um and really acting with with someone as opposed to sort of um manufacturing I think Adam played Siri, he, he like read Siri from behind the camera. Um, and um, so that was just a whole other thing. But I loved, I loved acting with my mom in the beginning phone scene. And she was hilarious too. She was mm -hmm. fun. Yeah, the back and forth between Siri was really funny. Um, and so uh, my final question, what do you hope viewers take away from this? Um, I mean, I think that, um, you know, it's what's really special about these projects is that it's like a time capsule for this, you know, really uh, unique moment in global history. Um, like everyone can tell you where they were during the 2020 um, lockdown. Um, 
And I think that, um, you know, th this story touches on anxiety and motherhood in grief and loss um, and, and, and also technology and like how much we depend on it and how much we rely on it and are obsessed with it and um, how much it can help us and also how much it can, how invasive it can be. So yeah, I think there's like multiple things that I would like people to take away, but um, but mainly I'm just really proud of it that it's this tiny snippet of um, of what we all went through. Mm -hmm. um,